Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now going to be answering question number five from the February March 2020 IGCSE Cambridge Paper Four. Um, this is extended paper four. This is from the 0580 syllabus. This is paper four two. Um, this question here is the first part is about simplifying this algebraic fraction. So we want to write this these two separate fractions as one fraction. And one thing that is very important for you to note is that dealing with fractions, whether it be algebraic fractions or just regular fractions, you're basically doing the same thing. Okay, so don't get confused by these letters. All right, when you when you're subtracting two fractions, for example, if I have a fraction, say, uh, two thirds minus one over two, what I do to solve this problem, I do exactly the same to solve that problem. This just looks a bit simpler than that. That's all because of these x's. But the same principles apply to this question as they do to that question. So one of the ways of solving a question like this is to make the denominators the same by finding the LCM of the denominators. Now the LCM of 3 and 2, the number that both go in 2, is 6. So I'm going to write 6 and 6 here. So similarly for this, I can do something exactly the same way. So I have x plus 3 over minus x minus 2 over. So the LCM of the denominators, let me just write first the new, the LCM of the denominators. Well, it's going to be x minus 3 times x plus 2. x minus 3 times x plus 2. That's the LCM of these two numbers, or these two terms. So that's like the common denominator. Now, how do I find what's up here? I say, okay, I have to multiply 3 by 2 to give me this 6. So therefore, I have to multiply the top by the same thing. So 2 times 2 gives me 4. And I have to multiply 2 by 3 to give me 6. So I have to multiply the top by the same thing. That's 1 times 3, which is 3. So the same thing I do here. I think, what do I multiply x minus 3 by to give me x plus 2? Uh, x minus 3 times x plus 2. Well, I have to multiply by x plus 2. So therefore, I have to multiply the top by x plus 2 as well. So it's x plus 3 times x plus 2. What do I have to do? Multiply x plus 2 to give me x mi minus 3 times x plus 2. Well, I have to multiply by x minus 3. So I multiply the numerator also by x minus 3. Okay, so it's, it's the same thing as we have here. Now we have one common denominator. So this is like under 6. 4 minus 3 gives you 1. So 1 over 6 is the answer. All right, so over here we do the same thing. We can write this as 1 one fraction with the common denominator x minus 3 times x plus 2 and then I have to deal with this x minus 3 times x plus 2 minus x minus 2 times x minus 3. Now the place where many students make mistakes here is they start cancelling out for example they say this and that cancel out. No it doesn't. This x plus 2 is a a factor of just this part of the numerator, not of the whole numerator, as is the x minus 3. So you can't cancel this with this unless I can take the whole thing out of this as one factor of the whole numerator. So you don't do that. That's something that people uh, do. Now what we need to do now is to expand this bracket and simplify. So you have x times x is x squared. And you'll notice the middle term becomes 5x because you have x times 2 and then plus 3 times x. That's 2x plus 3x, which is 5x, and plus 6, which you will notice it's like uh, this middle term is the sum of these two, and the last term is the product of those two, as long as it says 1x. So that's something you notice. Then here's another point where you have to be very careful. So I would write this in a bracket. I would expand this in a bracket to save it from or to protect it from this minus sign until we've simplified it. Otherwise, it starts getting confusing. So I'll write the minus sign there, and then I'll expand this as normal, but inside a bracket. So you'll have x squared minus 5x plus 6 and that's all over and then this I'm not going to expand this because it's already you know in its kind of simple form where, you, where it's factorized so keep it factorized in case at the end you can ca cancel out common factor why did I expand these because I want to combine these together and simplify it further this is already simplified written like that you don't need to expand it so you got x squared minus x squared which is 0 5x minus 5x, sorry, plus 5x, okay, which gives you 10x. And you got 6 minus 6, which is 0. So you have 10x over, and then you got x minus 3 times x plus 2. 
So there's your answer to part A. You can't simplify it any further. There's no, read to, no need to expand the denominator. But if you did, it would be no problem. If you wrote it as 10x over x squared minus x minus 6, it would also be correct. But this is perfectly fine to leave it like that. And there's the answer. Okay, so you have, remember the minus sign here, so x squared minus x squared is 0, 5x minus minus 5x is 5x plus 5x, which is 10x, and 6 minus 6 is going to give you 0, so you're left with 10x of x minus 3 times x plus 2, and that completes question 5, part A, algebraic fractions. Now for 5, part B, which is to do with exponential equations. Okay, this is an exponential equation. Okay, the key to solving exponential equations is make the bases the same. So first of all, I've got 2 to the power of 12 divided by 2 to the power of k over 2. So I can combine this into one uh, term as 2 to the power of, and then when you are dividing numbers in index form, you subtract the power. So it's 2 to the power of 12 minus k over 2. All right, and I can express 32. Well, 32 is the same as 2 to the power of 5. Okay, which you should know. If you didn't know, you can you see that this is the power of 2, so you, you can uh, kind of guess that that's going to also be expressed to the power of 2. So you can say, all right, let's, let's try different numbers, like 2 to the power of 4, for example. No, 16. And then, you know, if you try 5, you'll see you get 30. So you can use, use some trial and error to try to find out 2 to the power of what is equal to 32. It's 2 to the power of 5. Now, because in these type of questions, you'll always be able to make the, the, the bases the same. So now, once we have the base is the same, then that means you can equate the powers because these two are equal to each other. 2 to the power of something is equal to 2 to the power of something. Those two somethings must be equal. So from this, we can deduce that 12 minus k over 2, whoops, 12 minus k over 2 is equal to 5. Once the bases are the same, the powers must be equal. And I can get rid of this fraction. I can, well, in fact, I can just do it in an easy way. I can say 12 minus 5 is equal to k over 2. I like to keep the term that I'm finding um, positive. So that's 7 equals k over 2. And then I can multiply both sides by 2. So I'll say k equals 14. So k equals 14. And you can do a quick check to see if you're correct. You can replace this with 14. You say 12. 12 minus uh, 7 is 5, and 2 to the power of 5 is equal to um, yeah, 32. That's right. So we know that we're correct. Okay, so we can do that. Now for part C of, the, of this um, question, it says expand and simplify this bracket. Okay, so this is like a triple bracket that they want us to expand and then simplify the answer. So what we can do first is we can take two of the brackets and multiply them together. So I'm going to multiply these two together first. Okay, I'll multiply those two together first. Something's happened to the pen one. Hold on a second. That's better. So I'm going to multiply these two together first. So I'm going to write 2y minus 1 times the expansion of these two. Now, when you expand something like this, they're just y terms, not just one y. So I can use my pattern. So there's going to be y squared, and the middle term will be minus y, and the, and the last term will be plus 12, my, sorry, negative 12. Okay, minus 12 here. Okay, um, if you did it the long way, y squared minus 4y plus 3y, that's minus y and minus 12. Okay, now I can expand this. So I'm going to multiply y with each of these terms. So that's going to be 2y times y squared, which is 2y cubed. 2y times minus y, which is minus 2y squared. 2y times minus 12, which is minus 24y. So I finished with the y. Now the negative 1, that will give you negative y squared plus y and plus 12. Now I have to simplify this. I've got 2y cubed minus 2y squared minus 2 minus y squared is minus 3y squared minus 24y plus y is minus 23y and plus 12. So there we have the answer. 2y cubed minus 3y squared minus 23y and plus 12. Simple expansion. You can, you could, I could have expanded these two first, and then multiply the answer by y plus 3. I could have multiplied these two first, and uh, these two, uh, sorry, this and this together, and multiplied the answer by y minus 4. In each case, I should get the right answer. But I think it's easier to do these two first, because it's very easy to, to expand something like that, and then multiply the answer by 2y minus 1. That's probably the quickest way of dealing with it. 
Now for part D, it says make x the subject of this formula. Make x the subject of this formula. Okay, in order to do that, we have to get rid of the fraction first. Any type of equation that you want to solve or whatever, then in this case we have to solve for x, make x the subject. We want to get rid of the fraction. So multiply both sides by y. So that, that will give us x times y equals 3 plus x. Multiply this side by y, the y is cancelled. Now I want to make x the subject. So I could take, either I could subtract 3 from both sides, or I could subtract or I could uh, subtract x from both sides, bring the x's together on one side. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. So xy minus x equals 3. Now I want to make x a subject. So I see x is common in these two terms. So I take x as common. I have x times y minus 1 equals 3. And then I can divide both sides by y minus 1. So 3 over y minus 1 is my answer. x equals 3 over y minus 1. So what we're doing here is the same thing that we would do is if as if for example this was just a, a regular number for example supposing this was the number four i would multiply both sides by four so i'd say 4x equals 3 plus x and then i would put the x's on one side so i have 4x minus x equals 3 and then these two combine to give you 3x and then you can continue so it's exactly the same thing that we're doing here all right exactly the same thing that we're doing here we are first getting rid of the fraction, and then we're bringing the x terms together on one side. Now, I can't simplify this as one, one x term, but what I can do is I can take x as a common factor, and then I can say, like, you know, the coefficient of x is y minus 1, and then divide both sides of, x, uh, divide both sides of the equation by y minus 1, and I've got my answer. They cancel from this side, and I've got my answer. So what we're doing here and what we're doing there is basically very similar. Okay, it's just that in this case, 4x minus x gives us 3x straight away. They simplify. Whereas xy minus x doesn't simplify, so I've got to take x as common. Okay, so there's the answer to part D. And that concludes this question, which is question number 5 from the IGCSE March 2020 paper, two, paper 4 to... Um, this is... Uh, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here. You can click on the link. Other questions from the topic of algebra, um, algebraic manipulation and equations can be found in this playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.